Did you tear your ACL or your meniscus and don't know the difference between one or the other or don't know if you tore the ACL versus the meniscus? In today's episode, we're gonna go over all things of ACL versus meniscus. My name is Dr. Marco Lopez, doctor of physical therapy and certified strength and conditioning specialist and the co-founder of the Basketball Doctors. Our goal for the Basketball Doctors is to provide evidence-based information regarding all things basketball, rehab, performance, and injury prevention. This is all for educational purposes, not medical advice. If you need medical advice, send us an email, hopefully we can help you, or reach out to your local physical therapist or physician. Let's jump into the topic of the differences between the ACL and the meniscus. So before we go into it, we have good videos on the ACL, all things about the ACL, as well as the meniscus. But we're going to talk about the differences to find out if you tore one versus the other or both. So the ACL, to kind of give a quick summary, it's a ligament versus the meniscus, it's not a ligament, it's more of a fibrocartilage pad here. So the ACL connects bone to bone, that fibrocartilage pad is the cushion between bone to bone. So that's why sometimes they get confused. The other difference is that the meniscus has pretty good blood supply in certain areas versus the ACL doesn't really have good blood supply. So that's why when you tear your ACL, you're going to need reconstruction surgery. So they need to get a new ACL to go in there versus the meniscus. Sometimes they repair the meniscus or they just remove part of the meniscus that is torn because there's certain parts, red zone versus white zone, that has good blood supply versus not good blood supply. The meniscus also, there's two menisci. We have the lateral and the medial, me, medial versus the ACL, there's just one ACL. And the differences between the mechanism of injury, they're actually pretty fairly similar, similar because you see a lot of people that tear their ACL and their meniscus at the same time. However, the big thing, the big difference is the meniscus, there's also non-traumatic injuries for the meniscus. So for an ACL, it usually happens with a traumatic injury, meaning you go for a cut and then you twist and you have a shift in your knee joint and that causes a tear in that ACL. Versus the meniscus, you can have it traumatic versus non-traumatic. Traumatic is you have some twisting mechanism or hyperflexion or hyperextension. Also, as you get older, normal part of age changes, the more loading you have in the knee joint, it just slowly deteriorates and you have that meniscus tear. So ACL, there has to be some kind of traumatic injury. Meniscus doesn't necessarily have to have. And then in regards to the symptoms, one of the most important symptoms for both to see if you have a tear and you need surgery is what we call the mechanical symptoms. So one, for the ACL, you'll feel more instability. So if you tear your ACL, you're able to walk and do a lot of stuff and it's usually not too painful but you might have instability when you run and cut versus a meniscus. It's not so much that you'll have instability. You'll have more clicking and locking. The locking is the most important thing because the locking, the meniscus there's, that's torn goes inside the knee joint and causes that locking. When there's that locking, then we have, they have to go in there to remove that meniscus that's flapped over or that's floating around causing that locking. Those are the two main reasons why you need to have surgery for either or. So if you have more instability, we're thinking more ACL. If you have more locking, we're thinking more meniscus. The next part goes to the rehab. So let's say you do have ACL surgery. You're going to have to get a new graft um, and then they reconstruct the ACL and you're looking at anywhere between 10 to 12 months recovery to go back to sport. Meniscus, if you have surgery, versus if you don't. If you don't have surgery, depends on what kind of symptoms you're presenting with. Usually I would say three to six months at the most. If you ha end up having surgery, let's say a meniscus repair, you're looking at six to eight months recovery because you don't put weight on this meniscus when it gets repaired. So you can't put weight on it for six to eight weeks depending on the surgeon. Then from there, you gotta regain all that muscle that's lost and go back to that sport. You can also have a meniscectomy where they remove part of the meniscus Quicker rehab, quicker return to sport, but your knee flares up. Think about what happened to Lonzo Ball, Robert Williams. Um, another player is that I'm thinking is James Wiseman. When they have a meniscectomy, 
and they tear it again or they flare it up because sometimes they progress too quickly. The last one is the meniscus transplant where they transplant the meniscus. That's for a really big tear, degenerative tear. Uh, those are least common and usually you take up to a year for that rehab. But those are the, some of the differences between the ACL and the meniscus. And like I mentioned guys, you sometimes could tear both at the same time. Most of the time there is a combination of this injury. You tear your ACL and your meniscus. But sometimes you could tear your meniscus or just tear your ACL. But hopefully you learn the differences between the two, what their purpose are. Remember, meniscus is that cushion, ACL is more that stability. And also just know that we have to look at mechanical symptoms. If you have locking, then surgery is probably recommended. If you don't, go through the non-operative route. ACL, if you have instability, then surgery is probably recommended. Hopefully you learned a lot. If you like this video, hit the like button, share button, subscribe to our channel, share this with friends and family. We are the basketball doctors, let's ball for life.